nothing happens when I try to start it and you cannot take the key out as well a little background on the car the car belongs to a friend of me one day they went to start it and nothing happened and then they couldn't pull the key out as well uh, they tried jump starting that didn't work and that's when I was called hey guys and welcome back to the channel I tell you the truth I was hesitant to upload this video when I start videotaping I thought we were looking at a bad CIM however this video will still show you how to do the diagnosis I did try to scan the car for code before and that's when I grabbed the camera and start recording a total loss of communication that usually points toward a bad CIM the factory tool is providing me with excellent tests to perform quickly flash the high beam if it works then I have a wiring issue between the CIM and the data link connector if it doesn't then either the CIM or its power supply has failed or something is pulling the whole network down as you can see now there is no high beam function let's check power supply to the CIM communication wiring integrity and if that checks ok we'll isolate the CIM from the network and see if we can restore the IBUS if it does then we have a bad CIM to reach the CIM connector all you have to do is just pull the leather cover I already pulled some wiring diagrams and connector pin assignment to do some testing. This is the wiring diagram for the CIM. Let's start by testing the main ground from ground point G43 to pin 7 in the connector. I'm inserting a tiny pin into the connector make sure we don't spread the pins and cause any damage I have the test light connected to battery positive when I touch any ground the test light should light up as you can see I have a good ground connection next let's test the 12 volt power supply to the CIM for that I move my test light to any grounding point to check my test light, I touch the pin 16 in the data link connector, which is a fixed power supply. Let's move the pin to number 1. And that's when the video turned to something I didn't expect. We don't have power at pin number 1. I even double check my test light just to make sure. Power is supplied by fuse number 2 in the instrument cluster fuse box. So let's check that fuse first. <laughs> fuse
Fuse number two is the second one from top and left. And that's when I spotted something. Let me take you with me. It's that 5 amp fuse that looks different. I called my friend and asked if they ever had the same thing going on before and they confirmed the car was normal for the past two years of ownership. I couldn't test this type of fuse while it's in so I pulled it out and was blown. I hope the camera will show it clearly. Was it an intermittent issue the previous owner had or somebody replaced this fuse for any reason with a non-OEM fuse that just blew for no reason? For the meantime, I'll just replace the fuse with a used OEM one and I'll just double check the correct rating and yes it is a 5 amp. If it happens again in the future, I'll have to test the amp draw on that fuse, see what other components are provided power through it check wiring for shorts and fingers crossed we can locate any abnormality. I'm already able to pull the key out which is a good sign. Everything back to normal, at least for now. Let's check the car for any DTCs that may help our diagnosis, but I doubt. But we'll have to delete any DTCs stored in the car anyway. The rear right door module is disconnected in this car until we get a new window regulator for it. The second and third codes, in addition to the last three ones, are set because of the power supply failure to the CIM. So no other code provide any additional info. Let's delete the codes, hand over the car to be driven, and if it comes back, we'll have to dig deeper. The only code left now is related to the rewrite door module. Thank you guys for watching. If you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Bye bye.